So if you've seen any of my videos in the past on YouTube, then you probably would have seen this little bad boy, the Fujifilm Class AS. got into film photography I discovered a box of old film cameras that belonged to family and I went out and I bought some film loaded up these cameras and went around and just captured a bunch of stuff and I left it at that I didn't even develop them till months later so when I finally developed them and I got all these photos I was like this is cool so I started researching different point-and-shoot cameras and I would put a roll in and I'd test it out and then I'd try another one I said to myself, what would be if I had to choose one point and shoot camera, the holy grail? Like what would be the one camera that would serve all my needs? And that was this, the Fujifilm Class AS. So this film camera came out in around mid-2007. They produced it up until 2012. So it was pretty late to the game, the film. I always wanted something that was compact, like this could fit in your pocket very easily. I also wanted something that was durable, like well-made. Always wanted a sharp lens, fast lens. This is a 2.8 and that's what I always look for. Those three things are always a priority. Compact, solid build and fast, sharp lens. So the other thing that is very neat about this camera is you got the exposure dial here at the front. Um, and it locks in very well. I don't really use it that often, only when necessary. The other cool thing is you got an aperture dial on the top where you can choose what aperture you want to shoot at. There's a bunch of different flash settings you can also set in here, whether you want it on, off, red eye. Um, there's a bulb feature which I've actually left off, left on accidentally in a shoot. Which actually, the photos came out pretty cool. So yeah, it wasn't intentional, but I was happy with it in the end. The other cool thing about this camera that you don't actually see in many point and shoot cameras is you can dial in your ISO. So if you want to really turn it up, if you're shooting expired film and you want to push it a few stops, or if you're just wanting to play around with the ISO, you can get up to 3200 on this. So when you finish a roll on this camera and it winds itself back up, it leaves a little it leaves a little bit left of the roll out. So you can wind this back up and do double exposures if you want. So I've tried it before. You can get some cool effects, but you never really know what you're gonna get. Anyway, so I've shot on this camera for many years now, so I love it and I just thought, you know what, it probably deserves a little camera review and my thoughts on it. So price, this isn't the most affordable point and shoot camera but it's definitely not the most expensive either. So if you're looking for, you know, a very well built, compact, packed with features, sharp lens, but you're not ready to pay contacts T2 prices, then I would consider this. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below.